up your YouTube search for Stupid Meadows. Watch on your big screen. Get yourself comfy, this could take a while. What a happy scene. Something new every day for your long term memory. This is so exciting, it is nearly time for a stupidly assembly. Good morning everyone and welcome to Wednesday's Reading Assembly. For each other we, every day we, to improve we, together we will, every single Stukely day we focus on. Our Stukely motto is, our Stukely curriculum is, and four words that made the magic happen. Lots of working hard in this school, I see it all the time, and lots of being kind. And where I don't see it, and where the teachers don't see it, we will talk to you about it, and how you can get your best better. We're never gonna stop doing that, please remember it. Right, we're gonna crack on with Mr. Gum pretty soon, but before that, we're gonna do a little bit more author retrieval. I'm still on Charles Dickens, I'm not obsessed with him, but we read so many of his books, abridged versions, that I don't want to lose that momentum. So I'm going to put four answers at the bottom. If you think it's number one, hold up one finger. You think it's number two, hold up two. You get it. Question number one. What was the name of Charles Dickens' favourite pet? See you, Mrs. Carroll. Charles Darwin expert, not Charles Dickens. Same kind of time. When was um when was Darwin born, Mrs. Campbell? When? Yeah, what year? Oh. Oh, Darwin was born in 1809. We know that Dickens was born 1812, so they were alive at the same time. That is incredible. Anyway, which one of these is the name of his um, uh, favourite pet? Okay, number two. Which one of these characters is not in Oliver Twist? Which one is not in Oliver Twist? Question number three, this is an easy one. Which direction did he face when he slept and he wrote his books? That one's a bit easy. And question number four, what did he do lots of as a child? Okay. Hopefully your teachers know them to give you the answers. If they don't, you will. So let's keep that going. And I really hope that as you get older and as you move into secondary school and become young adults, etc., when you come across Charles Dickens books or films or, or versions of his stories and novels, Give them another go. They're some of the greatest stories you'll ever hear. Okay, Mr. Gum, before we get stuck into the book, let's have a very quick recap of where we're at. And you know that I'm going to get one of those in. Right, Mr. Gum, you're a bad man. He is a bad man. He's a horrible man. His house is disgusting. His garden's beautiful. But the problem is he has to keep it beautiful because the angry fairy keeps whack having a go at him if he doesn't. The dog turns up, Jake, lovely big dog, whopper dog, goes through everyone's gardens, gets to Mr. Gum's garden, wrecks it, angry fairy comes after him, whack, whack. Mr. Gum is not enjoying life, he can't stop Jake, Jake keeps going again and again and again and again and again, the fairy keeps going, whack, 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 again and again and again and again. Uh, Mr. Gum then comes up with a plan. The plan is to get rid of Jake, the whopper dog. Uh, he decides to get some rotten meat, Gross! Um, he poisons it and he's going to feed it to Jake and hopefully kill the dog. But I don't know if we're going to come back to this. There is a chest, there is a box in Mr. Gum's house that he's never looked in. It might be that the author, what's the author's name? Andy Stanton. It might be that he doesn't come back to that in the story. 
but I keep mentioning it in case he does, and I don't know the answer. Anyway, then while Mr. Gum's getting ready to poison the dog, he comes across a little girl called Polly. She's got a much longer name than that. We call her Polly. Polly hears about the plan and runs to get help and bumps into Friday O'Leary, who's living in a cottage. And now we're gonna pick the book up with Polly meeting Friday O'Leary and she still needs to stop Mr. Gum before it's too late. Here we go, everyone. Chapter six, Mr. Gum lays down his hearts. Bit of an unfortunate picture there. Right, while this was all happening, Mr. G while this bit was happening, Polly and, and, and Friday O'Leary, while this was happening, Mr. Gum was a mumbling and a grumbling his way into town. He walked past Billy William III's Right Royal Meats shop, and he was kind of tempted to go in, but he knew it'd be a waste of time. He'd never find anything nice smelling in Billy William's butcher shop. Can you remember why he's looking for something nice smelling? It's because he doesn't want the meat, I think it's because he doesn't want the meat to put off the dog. He wants the dog not to smell it's rotten and eat it. I think that's right. Uh, he'd never find anything nice smelling in Billy William's shop. That was one of the reasons that Mr. Gum liked him, because he was a stinker. <laughs> there were no customers with Billy William at that hour, and Mr. Gum could see him through the dirty window. He was playing a game of butcher's darts which is exactly the same as normal darts, except that the board is a pig's head and the darts are old sheep bones. Billy William had invented the game one day when he'd had too much to drink. Mr. Gum loved butcher's darts, but there was no time to pop in and challenge Billy William to a match. He had more important things to do, or rather more important things to poison or rather more important dogs to poison. He had more important dogs to poison. So he carried on past the shop and crossed over to Mrs. Lovely's wonderful land of sweet shop, which was a sweet shop at the end of the road. As you might guess, Mr. Gum did not enjoy going in there at all because it was a wonderland full of sweets and goodness. And Mr. Gum was a filthy old devil who hated things like sweets and birthday parties and kittens dressed as clowns. He would much rather hear a piano being demolished by illegal bulldozers than a Mozart concerto. He didn't even like pop music, not even the Beatles. The only thing he liked about the Beatles was their name because they sounded like insects and you could scare people with insects. So he stepped into the sweet shop cautiously. Immediately the air was full of wonderful smells. The powdery smell of sherbet lemons mingled with the odours of strawberry bombs and licorice whips. Mr. Gum felt sick. He felt as if he were being attacked by good things. When he was a boy, he loved eating sweets, but that was before he turned into a bad man. Yet now he seemed to hear the voice of the boy that he once was, calling to him down the years. Where did it go, all that good? Where did it go? Oh, come back, good. Oh, come back, I know you can come back again. There's still time, there's still time, Mr. Gum, said the little voice in his head. He looked down and saw the little voice was not in his head at all, but it belonged to a little boy that was standing next to him. Say it again, said Mr. Gum. You can be good again, you can be good again, said the little boy, offering, a, offering him a fruit chew. For some strange reason, the boy's friendly face frightened Mr. Gum more than anything else in the whole sweet shop. All this talk of being good again, he snarled. I don't like it. And he shoved the boy out of the sweet shop. 
It makes me feel, makes me feel sick. At that moment, Mrs. Lovely came tumbling out of the back room with her beautiful eyes and kindly nose and kindly ears. How can a nose and an ears be so kindly? wondered Mr. Gum, but it was true. Everything about Mrs. Lovely was kindly. She was even kindly to horrible people like Mr. Gum, and he could not stand it. It made him want to break down inside and cry all the bad things away. Hello, you old witch, he sneered at Mrs. Lovely. Give me some lemonade powder. Mrs. Lovely's eyes sparkled. Yes, it's a beautiful day, Mr. Gum. Yes, it is. She smiled as she measured out a bag of lemonade powder. I don't know what's so lovely about it, you old menace, snarled Mr. Gum, handing over some potatoes that he'd painted to look like pound coins to save money. <laughs> he was annoyed to see that as soon as the potatoes touched Mrs. Lovely's hands, they turned into real money. One of them turned into a jewel with a laughing face on it. Shabba me whiskers, he growled, turning on his heel in disgust. Oh, it's a pleasure to see you always, Mr. Gum, beamed Mrs. Lovely, as the old man stormed out with the little bag of lemonade powder clutched between his elbows. I do hope you come again soon, <laughs> said Mr. Gum. Mr. Gum hardly noticed the walk home, mainly because he took a taxi. He couldn't wait to get his plan in action. Very soon he was back in the smelly kitchen. He rubbed his hands together gleefully and danced a cruel jig like a spiteful imp who'd snotted all over the presents on Christmas morning. He opened the little bag and sprinkled its contents over the rotten and poisoned cow hearts. Then he gave them a quick sniff. <coughs> Jibbers, he gasped clutching his nose and throat. They smell of lemons and sunshine and friendship. I can hardly breathe. Holding the bag at his arm's length, Mr. Gum took the plate of doom out into his very neat and tidy garden. He placed it right in the middle of the lawn where Jake the Whopper Dog was sure to see it. The day was very still. Not a single blade of grass was moving. Somewhere in the distance, a chicken barked. Mr. Gum settled back in his favorite broken chair and watched and waited to see what would happen next. We're gonna finish the story there. Um, those of you who are interested, there's the barking chicken. Um, next week, we're going to pick it up at Friday O'Leary. So we're going to find out more about this man who we think Polly is getting to help save Jake the Whopper Dog. Oh, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. Right, we're going to go straight from that brilliant chapter into cheer, boo, song or silence. Who? Will it be and what will they get? Will they get a cheer or will they get a boo? With either one there must not be violence. They may well get a song but it will not last that long. We really hope they do not get silence. Here we are again everyone. Cheer, boo, song or silence. And I'm very excited because behind the curtain is Mrs. Arnold from the office team. I never thought I'd get her behind the curtain. That, yeah, that didn't sound right, but we, this is going to be great. But will she get a cheer, a boo, a song or silence? What do you think? Mrs. Wing is desperate for her to get a boo, but I'm hoping that isn't the case. Right, here we go, everyone. Out you come, Mrs. Arnold! Don't you know, pump it up, you got to pump it up. Yes! Oh, 
We were so worried it was going to be another silence, but great work, Mrs. Arnold. What a great day. See you next time for more cheer, boo, song, or silence. Will they get a cheer or will they get a boo? With either one, there must not be violence. They may well get a song, but it will not last that long. We really hope they do not get silence. Mrs. Arnold won't often say this. She's quite a closed person, but I know she loved doing that. And she's probably gonna watch that video back dozens of times just to relive the moment. It was great. Right, just before we move into uh, shout outs, um, what I'm gonna try and remember to do every week, when I've read a bit of Mr. Gum, I'm going to write a sentence in my learning log because I'm asking you all to, and your teachers are asking you all to write in your learning log every time you read. And if I do it as well, it might give you some clues. So I'm just gonna think what happened in that chapter. We know that he went to the sweet shop, he met Mrs. Lovely, why did he go there? He went there to get something to make the, the disgusting meat smell better. So I'm gonna write, capital letter, Mr. Gum visited, yes, yeah, visited the sweet shop. Oh, it's not easy, oh, my pen is playing up. Mr. Gum visited the sweet shop to get something to, I'm actually gonna use the word scent because the scent is the smell. Um, and it's usually, a scent is usually a nice smell, I think. I think that's accurate. Mr. Gum visited the sweet shop to get something to give his rotten meat a sweeter scent. Don't run out on me, pen. Uh, it's not great, I'll be honest with you, everyone. But there I've written, Mr. Gum visited the sweet shop to get something to give his rotten meat a sweeter scent. Full stop. Right, that's me done. And I expect you to do the same with your learning logs every time you read some of your books. Right, shout outs, let's do birthdays. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Today we've got a couple. Happy birthday. Georgia in foundation stage and Maya in year four. You've both got your birthday today. I hope you've had a lovely morning and the rest of your day is fantastic. And I hope that everyone is kind to you and, and happy around you to make the day even better. That would be fantastic. Uh, the other shout out is, or two more shout outs really. The first one is to every child that's done an AR quiz or been on Times Tables Rockstars since I've come round to give you a bit of a bit of a rocket. I've been around to remind people that you need to be doing these and thank you those of you that have thought, right, I need to get focused and done them. I really appreciate it and you will too. The second shout out is to everybody that's visited the Oak Leaf Bookshop so far. It's been fantastic to see happy children coming in and leaving the shop even more happy because they've bought something for them or their family. Here are a few pictures from the Oak Leaf Bookshop. If you haven't visited yet, here are the kind of things that you can get. important 60 seconds are coming up now 
the most important 60 seconds are coming up now. Okay, another reminder. If you want to order your Christmas cards, you need to order them online and send your card back into school. If we don't get your card back, you can't order it. It's as simple as that. Please get your card sent back in. Last thing for today, you are all going to see a lot more of this poster. This is a brand new Stukely home learning poster. It says very clearly what we are expecting you to do at home. Reading five times a week, writing a sentence every time you read, take an AR quiz if you need to do one, practice your spellings or phonics, and then do some maths at home as well. This poster says very clearly what you should be doing. Most of you are doing that, some of you aren't. Every Monday and every Tuesday, I'll be checking this. Your teachers will be checking it all the time. You need to put the effort in for this, and hopefully your families will help you to get into a routine. Because doing this and working hard in school will get your best better. That is a promise.